We used to talk about tinnitus having many different parts and being a condition triggered not only by the various factors, but also influenced by certain preconditions. Some of these preconditions are well known, while others are still being studied as we learn more about the processes in our nervous system, particularly within our brains. With all the advancements in computer-assisted imaging techniques like MRI, and especially when exploring functional MRI for studying our brain, it becomes evident that modern neuroscience is just scratching the surface. There is still much more to be learned beyond what's universally accepted. However, some neural pathway development processes are well understood due to their importance. That Professor Pavel Yastrubov's tinnitus retraining therapy, based on implementing the neurophysiological model of tinnitus, is becoming widely accepted and more popular since its first publication in scientific journals and so-called white papers. We take pride in our association with Professor Yastrubov, and based on our research and many years of experience in using TRT in our treatments and therapies, we are staunch supporters who can attest to the exceptional value of his research and work. When you look at the screen and see a picture showing some parts of the brain which can be easily recognized, and based on Professor Pavel Yastrubov's neurophysiological model of tinnitus, are known to be involved in the chronic tinnitus condition or even temporary tinnitus. As we can see in the picture, the central part or element represents Professor Yastrubov's tinnitus model. It is called the limbic system. This part of the brain takes a very active role in presenting tinnitus symptoms to our conscious awareness. It's clearly shown in our pictures due to its significance and its role in the proper functioning of our brain, which sometimes leads to it being referred to as a separate brain. The limbic system is often recognized as the most important part of our brain involved in producing tinnitus symptoms, strength and awareness changes, especially when we discuss severe or catastrophic levels of chronic tinnitus. As science tells us, the limbic system supports many different functions, including emotion, behavior, motivation, long-term memory, and others. This part of the brain plays a crucial role in various brain functions, especially those related to our basic survival instincts and the fight-or-flight response. As we mentioned earlier, this is also a part of the brain that can make a drastic difference in how our tinnitus is and how it behaves. That's why, as we try to understand the true nature of tinnitus and why it behaves in certain ways, it's essential to know the role and significance of the limbic system. It influences whether we are aware or unaware of the presence of tinnitus, which can range from being extremely annoying and loud to less noticeable, and at the end making it challenging for us to pinpoint. What makes the difference is this understanding that the brain's limbic system is responsible for most emotional processing. Individuals with an anxiety disorder are known to have abnormally high activity levels in these areas. Now, please remember that most tinnitus sufferers experience high levels of stress and anxiety caused by tinnitus presence. On the other hand, any additional source of anxiety or stress present in our lives is known to have a dramatic effect on the awareness and strength of tinnitus-related symptoms by increasing what we could call a basic level of the limbic system activity to a much higher level 